again, my name is Bea, and I get to be part of ACCI, which is All for Christ Church International, okay? Today, I'm going to go straight ahead to the message because I believe that God has something great for us today. And we are continuing our series called, if you can put up in the slide, our series is called Jesus, say this with me, Jesus, Jesus. God's Life-Changing Word. Let's do it one more time. Everyone, it has to be all of us at the same time, okay? One, two, three. Say, Jesus, God's life-changing word. And I think that this series is so very important, not just to our church, but even us as, as individuals. Maybe you have just come into the Christian faith for the first time, or maybe you are new to the faith, or maybe you are discovering the Christian faith wherever you're at in life. I believe that this series is important because we are going to be talking about foundational truths. And even if you have come, if even if you were a Christian for a while, it's good to know the things that we're already used to. Tama ba? And there are words that we keep saying in our Christian faith, but we, like, when someone asks us what it is, we don't know how to explain it. Tama ba? Like, there are just things like salvation. Like, what does it mean to be born again? What does Jesus say, say about certain things? And so in this series, I encourage you, even if I'm, whoever's here on the stage um, sharing the word during the series, I encourage you to write things down because these are important. And even if you've noticed in the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about stories where Jesus himself was there. These are words that Jesus himself has said. And even last week, sino dito nandito last week? Who here was here last week? Last week, last week we talked about the Samaritan woman and Jesus. And I personally, I think that's the most relatable story for me because the Samaritan woman is She's just going through a lot of mess in her life. She was sinful. She was, she was imperfect in every way. And I could say that I probably, I feel the same way about her. We talked about that last week. We talked about what Jesus has said. But, you know, what better way to know more about Jesus just by actually studying verbatim what he has said in the Bible. Amen? And we only talk about what is being said here in this book. Amen? Sino dito nagdala? Who here brought a physical Bible with them? Ang mga A-star student natin, yes. Ang preach team. Who here has a physical Bible? Ayan. Did you bring it today? Yes. Next week, bring your physical Bible. Okay ba? All right, I just want to know if I'm talking to someone. And... Uh, our anchor series, um, our anchor series verse would be in Romans 8, 28, 29. This is our favorite, one of our favorite verses in our church because we used to say this every single week. And it goes like this. Can we read this together? It says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. This is a powerful verse because what it says here is that in, we, we know by faith that all of the things that we go through, whether good or bad, God still works it out for our own good. Why? Because we have been called to his very purpose. Amen? Amen. And today, we're going to be talking about a gift that God has promised even from the very beginning of time. And Jesus, time and time again, before, when he was walking with the disciples, before he got crucified, when he got crucified and risen again, he gave this promise not and this gift, not just to the disciples, but for all of us. And sino dito, if you were given a gift, you're just gonna leave it unwrapped. If you are used to getting gifts, baka siguro you don't, unwrap it. You don't check it out. But there's something so wonderful and exciting, right? Just trying to find out what's inside. Tama ba? Sino dito ang mga hindi pa naka-receive ng gift the past year? Serious nyo namang lahat. <laughs> Pag bata, when you're a kid, the younger you are, it's like for during Christmas and then the gifts are already there. The kid's like, Mommy, Mommy, can I please open it already? Nak, hindi pa. September 20 pa lang. <laughs> Mommy, mommy, what's inside? And then they call their siblings and like, ano kaya ito? Oh, I think it's, and then they just, 
ganyan-ganyan nila na pang sira na pagbukas nila. Diba? They just like shake the gift, the Christmas gift that they have, and they want to know what it is. And then we're just like, calm down. It's not Christmas yet. Then when they open it, and then they're not happy kasi tawel yung nasa loob. Tatapo na lang nila. Tama ba? <laughs> and, I, you know, one time, I received the gift. Received the gift. And I opened it immediately. And I said, oh, this is nice. But it was a wallet. I was like, oh, this is nice. Thank you. Ganyan, thank you. Ako, ganyan. Pero kasi I already had a wallet. So I was like, maybe I'll use this later on. So the later on, went for a while, it was really later on, so I put it aside, um, put it inside my desk, and uh, the later on finally came, and I was like, oh, I think I should check out this wallet. I was clearing things up, I was cleaning my place, and then I found this wallet again, this gift that was given to me, and I opened it up, just checking what's inside, ganyan, the pockets, not realizing that there was money inside. And the person, wanted to bless me, but I didn't have, I, I wasn't curious enough to check what was inside. Sayang, if, if pinamigay ko, then yung tao na yun would have gotten the money instead. And that would have been fine, but I would have missed out on the gift. Amen ba? And today, we're gonna talk about this gift that God has given to us, that we have to unwrap it, but not just to look at it from far ahead, but it is for us to use daily. It is literally the gift that keeps on giving. And today, what we're gonna be talking about, this gift is called the Holy Spirit. Wow, can you tell that to the person next to you? The Holy Spirit. And we're going to be talking about a few verses. Maybe it's going to be a little bit texty, but I ask for your patience and your attention span, okay? Focus, don't look at your phones. But if you are writing your notes on your phones, that's okay. But we're going to be talking about this gift that God himself has given and has promised and has intended for us to have from the very beginning of time. And our scripture reading today would be two chapters, okay? It's in Acts 1, verse 1 to 11. If you're writing notes, can you write that down? Acts 1, verse 1 to 11. And then Acts 2. There. And we have Acts 2, which you can write down later. But before that, our anchor verse is in Acts 1, verse 8. Can you look in the screen and read this with me? But you will receive power. Say power with power. Nga. Power. Yeah. And when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus himself was the one who said this. Before we start, can we pray one more time? Is that okay? Let's pray. Lord, thank you because your presence is already here. Lord, have your way, God, that as we go through the word, Lord, that it would pierce through every heart and every soul. I pray that the word would land on good soil, God, that there would be conviction and not condemnation. And we love you, God, and we thank you because you want us to have an abundant life, Lord. Thank you for bringing us here today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. So the reading that we are about to read, I just want to give you a bit of context, okay? So Acts 1 basically talks about the time that after Jesus raised from the dead after three days he was raised from the dead he actually didn't ascend to heaven agad agad he didn't ascend to heaven um, immediately he stayed here on earth for 40 days he was still continuing doing miracles um, he was he was spending time with his disciples and he was giving commandments now the author of of, of acts is apostle it, it was luke okay so it's luke speaking here Okay, I'll read it to you. You can follow by looking at the screen. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. Until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave them many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. So this is a command from Jesus himself. He gave this to his disciples. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait 
For the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Spirit. So there's a difference between being baptized with the water and being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So let's continue. Then they gathered around and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times and dates the Father has set by his own authority. Kung marites ka, kung kasama mo si Jesus, you would be asking these questions. Kailan kayo pupunta? Kailan kayo ganyan? Ganyan, the disciples were so curious. But verse 8, Jesus said, but you will receive Power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and the Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. And these disciples were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, bye bye, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Sabe, men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So Jesus will return the same way he ascended up and he will return the same way. Amen. And so this is what happened during the last few moments of Jesus here on this earth because he went back to heaven. Then after that, so the command of just bear with me, okay? This is going to relate to everyone. But the command of Jesus to the, the, the disciples is, wait in Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere, okay? I'm going to go back to heaven, but don't worry. You're not going to be alone. I'm going to send you someone where you will be, uh, that, that you will uh, gain power so that you can be a witness to my name. Now, the second scripture reading we're going to be talking about, this is the disciples who actually obeyed Jesus and waited, literally waited in Jerusalem. Okay? And this is important to know. Jerusalem is the main hub, the main place for all of the Jews, okay? And uh, the, during the Old Testament times, the Pentecost, okay, the day of the Pentecost, just going to give you quick fun facts. Day of Pentecost, Old Testament Jews would, on the Old Testament, the Jews would celebrate this because it's like a celebration of harvest, God providing for them. And God, uh, Jesus was very intentional to, 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 to do this at the day of the Pentecost. Cost. Why? Because all of the Jews from all over the world, they would come back to Jerusalem, the motherland, and then they will celebrate this day. Every person who has different cultures now, or rather different language that, languages that they're speaking, from different walks of life, if they were a Jew, they would come back. They would come back to that very place. This was the same time. Jesus didn't tell the disciples said it was going to happen during the day of Pentecost. So le let's read this through real quick. When the day of the Pentecost came, they were all together, the disciples, they were all together in one place. This one place we would call this the upper room. And while we're reading this, I want you to be creative. I want you to imagine like you were in the room, okay? Suddenly, say suddenly. A sound like a, the blowing of a violent wind came from the heaven and filled the whole house while they were sitting. So imagine all the disciples were sitting down because Jesus said, wait, magintay. So they were all chilling. I don't know what they were talking about. Baka chika chika sila, ganyan. But I'm sure they were interceding during that time. But they were sitting and suddenly a sound like the blowing Ganyan, mas malakas pa dyan, of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. Imagine fire, literally fire, ha? Apoy. They were, they, they were tongues of fire from above. And then they saw this fire and suddenly it separated and came to rest on each of them. If you're playing The Sims for all the young people or maybe the millennials, and I mean diamond sa taas, parang ganon. But that's fire on top of them and came to rest each of them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment. They were, they were like shocked. Bakit kaya sila shocked? Because each one of these disciples heard their, ah, each one of them 
heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in their native language? So what they've heard is these disciples, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they started speaking in tongues. And when they were speaking in tongues, the Jews that were from everywhere all over the world who spoke different languages could hear their language. It's pretty amazing. And thus, when this happened, then it was the start of establishing the Christian church. Okay? Amen, amen. And so, if, so this was, I know it's a lengthy story, but we're going to be unpacking this today. But if Jesus promised the disciples the Holy Spirit, then what's in it for us? Tamaba? What, why is this important for us to learn? Is it just a story that we get to read in the Bible? No, this is very important to us. And how is this relevant to us now? So these questions we're going to be asking and answering throughout this message. Second is, who is the Holy Spirit? Sino ba talaga si Holy Spirit? And how can we access it? Amen? And so, let's go through the first question. I know There's going to be a bit of teaching moment here, but bear with me. Okay? So who is the Holy Spirit? The, the gift that, that God has promised... And Jesus has affirmed God's promise while he was here on earth. Who is this Holy Spirit? But before we even talk about the Holy Spirit, we got to talk about something that's very important in our faith. And it's the, the try and the concept of the Trinity. Sabi nyo nga, Trinity. And this concept is, it's one of those things where your non-Christian friends would ask, Ha, tatlo yung God nyo? What do you mean? Isa lang, Tat tatlo, ano yan? Who here has been asked that before and you didn't know how to answer? Yeah. Diba? You're asking, and yet you're, even your, your Christian friends are asking, or maybe your, 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 your child is asking, what do you mean only one God and three different persons? What does that mean? And I'll give you a perfect analogy, okay? So the, the analogy I would give about the Trinity is it's like, it's like an egg. The egg, there are three parts. In that egg, there's a shell, Sige, mag-science class nga tayo. Shell, ano pa nasa loob? O, oh, yung gagaling naman. O, yung manunong. Egg white. And then the last? Egg yolk. Galing. But all of this is in one packaging. Tama ba? It cannot be an egg without any of them. Correct? Well, it is an egg with the egg yolk, the white. It cannot be formed without any of it. Amen? And so, similar. It's, like, it's my poor version of giving you an analogy of what this would be. But this is how I would explain it. So, the Trinity is one God who eternally exists. Meaning, from the very beginning of time, it, it was them already na magkakasama. But they exist as three dif distinct persons. And that's the Father, that's Jesus the Son, And that's the Holy Spirit. When I say three distinct persons, that means three different functions. Okay? Three different. And it's important for us to know because we want to be able to pray intentionally and specifically to the right one, the right name. Tama? And so, because they have three functions, I'll share you the quick three functions. So this is the God the Father. I broke it into three different parts. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, the function of God the Father is what? He is a provider. He is the creator of the universe and the heavens in the universe. If he is the creator, what that means is that he owns everything. And if he owns everything, he is the one who can provide. Amen? So that's God the Father. He's provided everything. And you will even see how much of a provider he is. Why? Because he sent us Jesus, his son, and the Holy Spirit forever. Come on. And so the next one is Jesus the son. And who is Jesus? He is our savior. In our faith, we know that all of us have sinned and fallen short. Meaning, we can try to do all the good works. We could try to give tithes to church. We could try to come to church every day. We can come to mass every day. We can do the communion, but none of that can save us. We can't be doing good works because at the end of the day, we're still sinful and we need someone to save us. And God says, I don't want to be separated from my people anymore. I want to be connected with them. But what separates us from him is our sin. And unfortunately, say unfortunately, 
We are sinful in nature and we need someone to once and for all save us for our sins. That's why we could live in freedom when we accept Jesus as our Savior. Grabe, we can live in freedom. Because we know we've been freed from these sins. We are not defined by the, these sins anymore. We might struggle, but we're not defined by it anymore. Amen? So that's Jesus the Son. And the next one, which is our main topic, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is our helper. And Holy Spirit is our helper. Why? Because when we... And I'll talk more about this later, but when we accept Jesus in our heart, like for me, I'll give you a story. When, when I grew up in church, so I have a different um, story as everyone else. I am pastor's kid. I grew up in church, but I knew all of the verses. Like I knew it from kids' church. And I knew the songs we would sing every single, every single week. Uh, my family would wake up in the morning very, very early on a Saturday, come to church whole day, stay in church Sunday, wake up in the morning, stay in church. That's our rhythm. And then the whole week, my parents would have counseling, like we would be doing ministry. That's my life. But I never, it was never personal to me. I never knew who Jesus was. And long story short, I got bullied in high school and it was a really tough time. After I graduated high school, I didn't know who I was. I was in, I wouldn't say that I was depressed during that time, but I genuinely did not like myself. And I genuinely was not okay with who I was. Why? Because of all of the bullying that happened. Ganyan. And then one day, my friend invites me to youth service. I go to youth service, and there you go. I encounter God. I encounter the presence of God. And that day, I had no idea that day I would give my life to Jesus. When I gave my life to Jesus, do you think that my struggles in life would go away already? No. I still struggled. But when I said yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit dwelled in me. And then he started to help me in my faith. Not just help, oh, you should do this, you should do that. But the Holy Spirit would encourage me. The Holy Spirit would tell me who I am and who God is. He would remind me of things that I've learned years ago. He would bring it up at the right time. And so on and so forth. He is our helper and so when you say, oh, it's hard to live a Christian life, of course it is, but we have a helper. Not only did Jesus save us, but we have a helper to live life here on earth. Amen ba? Amen. Amen. And so again, who is the Holy Spirit? John 14, okay? John 14 is, this is what before Jesus went to the cross. He told this to the disciples. I mean, if you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. An advocate is someone who backs someone up. To help you and be with you forever. Oh my forever tayo. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you forever. And so... The next, sabi dyan, all this I have spoken to you while still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send you in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said to you. And what does this mean? J Jesus, the Holy Spirit, all of them are in union. Okay, all of them are in union. They will not say something that is, like Holy Spirit will not say something that is separate from who God is or separate from what Jesus has said. They are all in unity. And Jesus said, verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So this is what Jesus says, Kusino ang Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is, the Holy Spirit is our helper. Say helper. He is our advocate. Say advocate. And he is our comforter. Everything you need, all in one package. Saan ka pa? An advocate is kind of like a, you know, if you are playing basketball or football, and then, di ba yung coach mo sa likod, parang back up, or parang, he will always encourage you. It depends on what type of coach you have, but... The Holy Spirit is like this. Before you lumaban ka sa, sa battle, lumaban ka sa buhay, in the morning when you spend time with Him, Holy Spirit's gonna be like this. Hey, hey, look at me. You got this. 
you got this. You can do this. I've given you a spirit. I did not give you a spirit of fear or timidity. I've given you a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. Hey, listen, I, you have everything you need. Hey, listen, you're going to have a good day because you have me. Like, like, Holy Spirit is like that. And he's a helper and he is our comforter. Did you know that the comforter in Greek, it means the one called alongside to help in time of need? So, the difference with our faith is that God is not someone whom we just worship and pray and he's someone who is far away. He's not like that. We have the Holy Spirit, which is God himself, here with us. Grabe. That means we're not just like praying to the universe. Universe, please help me. Hindi. Universe is created by God himself. Why should we worship the created? Diba? It's like we have the Holy Spirit with us. That's why we're never alone. We're never alone. I have many conversations with the Holy Spirit. Even coming here, I had many conversations with him. Hindi siya, buti na lang hindi siya nagsasawa sa akin kasi madaladal ako. Pero, ayun. <laughs> Pero imagine this. Imagine if you were given a mission or a purpose like Romans 8.28. We have been given, di ba? We have purpose in our lives. You've been given a mission and then you were just left hanging. You weren't given any guidance. You weren't given any instructions. And not just that, but you weren't given any help on the day-to-day. But God doesn't work that way. God loves us so much that we get to have the instructions here and we have the Holy Spirit to convict us, to encourage us, to edify us, to be our helper, advocate, and comforter. So personal. Holy Spirit is so personal. That's why you would be surprised. God would speak something else. Parang God would speak to someone and then you would also have different revelations. You read the Word of God. Before, before, I, before I had the Holy Spirit, I'd read the Word of God and I wouldn't understand what it says. But when I have the Holy Spirit, He started to reveal to me the mysteries of the Word. And the fun thing about reading the Bible is that it relates to, it's timeless, and it speaks to you in your season. That's why you're reading John 3.16, it comes out to you a certain way today, and then tomorrow you have a different revelation. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to us. And as a church, I pray that we would know how, who the Holy Spirit is and we would even strengthen ourselves with the Holy Spirit and we wouldn't miss out on this gift that keeps on giving. Amen? Amen. Hindi po to politician. The gift of gifts on giving. This is the Holy Spirit we're talking about. And so, if that is the case, my question is, I'll bring this question back. Okay, how is this relevant to us? How is the Holy Spirit relevant to us? And why do we need the Holy Spirit? We need the Holy Spirit because it would help us live an abundant life while here on earth. Abundant does not mean perfect or easy, but it means having a spirit-filled life. Amen ba? We get to live life with Jesus. We get to, like, basically when you say yes to Jesus and you receive it in my heart, he's not just gonna, he loves you as you are, but he's not gonna leave you the way you are forever. He's gonna, you will see that he will start to purify you. He'll start to convict you of things that is not according to his will because it's bad for you. He's gonna start to speak to you and not to condemn you, hindi kanya judge, but it's to convict you so that you can be more like Jesus. And when we become more like Jesus, honestly, this is where we get to have an abundant life. And so, like what Jesus said in John 14, I will teach you, uh, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. And so, before Jesus, I'm going to give you a story. You know, before Jesus, I would willingly do things that I know is not good for me. I would focus on, I used to be a people pleaser back then when I was growing up so I would think of what do people think of me I would think of you know fixing my image on social media like that's that who cares even like all of these things that I would focus on doing parang very parang hindi talaga it doesn't matter and I and my best friend would know who I was prior mapapa parang thank you Holy Spirit na lang kaming dalawa and so I used to sin I used to do all of these things but when I finally 
had the Holy Spirit, I started to have conviction. When the Holy Spirit would speak to me, it's like I want to hear Him even more. And the only way for me to hear Him more is to walk in obedience. And so I would do that. I'm like, whoa. And, and I honestly would have peace in my heart. It's like, it's like, talagang sela talaga. And so I wanted more of Him. And so I felt like, man, I, gotta, I have to obey. I want to obey. And when that happens, years later, this is where I am now. It is not because of my work, but because of the Holy Spirit living inside me. Amen? Amen. And I wouldn't be the way I am without the Holy Spirit. And I would say that I am living an abundant life because I have Jesus and I have the Holy Spirit with me. Amen? John 10.10. You know, the enemy will come to steal and kill and destroy but Jesus has come that you may have life and life to the full. It's like the thief, man, or whatever seed is planted in your heart. Kahit nga may conviction na kayo, biglang the thief would come to try to kill and steal and destroy whatever you, whatever revelation you've had, whatever momentum na meron ka. Like, every single time, I don't know why and I hate it. Every time I would go to a conference or I would experience God in a massive way, the minute I leave that door, something's gonna happen. Not something scary, but just like I get angry or like I get I have miscommunication with my family or something like that. Like it's like the enemy will already kill, steal, and destroy whatever happened during that moment. Sino dito mga relate sa akin? It's like you come to church and then you come home. It's like ah, diba? Tama, tama. Ilang Di ka pa kalumalabas yung boss mo, tinetext ka, o yung client natin, kailangan nito. Hindi mo pwedeng day off. Di ba? The thief will come to kill, steal, and destroy whatever he is, Jesus has given you, but he's come here to help us and for us to have life and have it to the full. Okay? And so, let me tell you, if you want to grow in your faith, if you want to be closer to your relationship with Jesus, if you are struggling with things, right, and you want to surrender it to God, we cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. Really, we cannot. We cannot do it with Jesus. Without Jesus, we cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. We need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And so, when you say yes to Jesus, you'll notice that your life will start to change and shift. Parang your priorities start to shift. Amen? And this isn't hype. It's like something happens inside of you that you just want more of God. Dama? And so, why do we need the Holy Spirit? So the first one is for us to live an abundant life. And the second one is the Holy Spirit empowers us to be a witness for, uh, the witness to people. The Holy Spirit would empower us to have courage and bravery and have the words to say, to be a witness to people. Why? Because people need Jesus. Everyone needs a Savior. We believe that in our faith. Everyone needs a Savior. You and I need a Savior. The person you don't really like needs a Savior. The person that uh, kind of judged needs a Savior. Everyone needs a Savior. And the Holy Spirit will empower us to be a witness to people. In other words, the Holy Spirit gives us the power to share about Jesus to the people around us. Again, Acts 1.8, it said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And power means so many things. But you know, it becomes a partnership. The Holy Spirit will empower us, how? By guiding us, Opening doors for the gospel, providing us wisdom and the courage to speak. And not just that, Holy Spirit, kasi partnership, when you decide to come out of your fear and be courageous and talk to that person and talk about Jesus, what the Holy Spirit does is it convicts that person. That's not your words, that's the Holy Spirit. Partnership. And it comes to, and, and, and the Holy Spirit would help while you are sharing the word of God, while you are loving on people well, Holy Spirit will convict and they would, it would draw them to Jesus. Not you, but to Jesus. Kaling. And did you know, you see the last part, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, ends of the earth. This is geographical. But in our personal lives, Jerusalem is the nearest people we have. It is the ones closest to us. And you will be witnesses to those people and you will receive power 
to be able to, to, pre, to, sp to speak about Jesus. And Judea and Samaria, a bit farther, maybe that's yung mga, yun yung mga workplaces nyo or yung mga kasama sa grocery na nakikita nyo. And to the ends of the earth, wherever that is literal, ends of the earth, wherever God takes you, you can be a witness to Him. Amen ba? Amen. Amen. And we will never live an abundant life unless we are walking in His will. And it is God's will for us to, be a, to bring people to Jesus. Amen? So, I'll share you a story. And I love this partnership with the Holy Spirit. And that's why, you know, like, I open up. Um, <laughs> that's why when I, when I grieve, when there are things that I feel like I've it didn't please the Holy Spirit or I've done things and I've missed the mark. That's really what sin is. You missed the mark. I feel sad because I'm unable to hear the Holy Spirit. And what that means is if there's anyone I'm supposed to reach out to that day, they miss out. So one day, I was. this was just a few months ago, last year, I was jogging in this park in Dubai and I was jogging, jogging, jogging. It's like, huh, I'm bored now. Oh, because it's just a little bit like that. Then, while I was jogging, I saw this woman. All right? She was just sitting on the grass. It was still winter time. It was still hot. She was sitting on the grass and she was writing something. And uh, she was praying. And I was like, hmm, this is interesting. Uh, so, um, I, I, I continued to jog. And while I'm jogging, I don't know why. The Holy Spirit started speaking to me. I think you should go and encourage her. I think you should go speak. I'm like, God, what will I say? Nakakahiya naman, I'm a stranger. Nakakahiya, di ba? Parang, I'm a stranger. What will I say to her? And this Ugandan lady, she's just, just busy, right? And while I'm doing my rounds, I'm doing my rounds, and then, and then I'm like, okay, if I do three more rounds and still she's there, then I will do it. And I already did three rounds and she's still there. I'm like, Okay, fine. I'll go up to her. And so after I finish jogging, I go up to her. I'm like, wait, she's still praying. But I go up to her, and the Siganan lady looks up, and she's like, huh? And then I say, hey, hi, how are you doing? It just, this might be weird, but I just felt God speak to me to, to, to bless you, and blah, 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 ganyan. And, and, sabi, and I asked her how she's doing, and then she started crying, ganyan. And it was a moment, and then I got to pray for her, and I got to get her number. And from that, uh, from that, she went to church the next day. She went to church with us the next day. And then we didn't realize that she was going through such a tough time. She got laid off at work. She hasn't been working for 10 months, and she has a lot of daming utang. Taming utang in the bank and her visas expire. All these problems back and forth. And she had no friends. Okay? She didn't know who to run to. That's why she was praying. She had faith, actually. She was already in her Christian faith, but she was, she was just praying to God. And I told her, listen, I am encouraged by your faith to kneel down and to ask God for what you're looking for. And anyway... Long story short, we're still friends with her now. She comes to church. She brought her family for the first time last week. She was able to bring her kids to church last week. Gabe, God is good. God is good. But if I missed out on that moment because I felt scared and I didn't obey the Holy Spirit, I would have missed out on seeing what God would do in her life. It's not even I'd miss out, you know, to get the glory credit. It's like I would actually miss out. And I wouldn't even get to know her. So, so that's one of the many things. It's like, wow, I'm here, God, not just to earn money. I'm not here just to be a good son or daughter to my parents or here to, to go to school. You actually have a purpose in my life. And we need, that's why we, the Holy Spirit, when it comes on you, you will receive power. Amen? And so... I'll give you another example, which is in Acts. When the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, imagine this. Do you know who this is? For all our Bible scholars. <laughs> who is this? This is Peter. Correct. Yan si Peter kasi may manok. Mang inasal. Ano kayang brand niya, no? JT's. <laughs> JT's. <laughs> Chick Jollibee. That's Peter. He denied Jesus three times. He's the same person. He said, I'm never going to deny you. I love you, Jesus. Like so like emotional, man. Calm down. 
And Jesus knew that he was going to deny him. And when he actually denied Jesus, that's his, this, is, this is Peter. But when the Holy Spirit came upon him, Acts 2, immediately, literally, nakalagay immediately, Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. And if you read through Acts chapter 2, my goodness, grabe si Peter. This became Peter afterwards. Amen. This could be you too. This could be us. Now, we're not staying in where we were before. But when we receive the power of the Holy Spirit, we can talk to people about Jesus with courage and faith. Maybe you're someone here, you know what God's calling you to do, but there's still a lot of questions. But when you have the Holy Spirit, you can do it. Amen? You can do it. Huwag ka mag-give up. Kasi you, you cannot do this by your own strength. But you have the Holy Spirit, so you can do this. Amen? Amen. I'll, I'll jump on the... I won't read this na kasi it's really long. But, G, but what happens is, when Peter was preaching to the crowd, those who accepted this message were baptized and were, about 3,000 were added to the number that day. Amazing. Pentecost Sunday, the Pentecost day was a celebration for harvest. That day, a lot was harvested. Jews from all over the world came to Jerusalem and they were harvested. They gave their life to Jesus. They were baptized and were saved. 3,000 were added to the, that day. Amen, amen. And so, you know, when you have the Holy Spirit, this is what happens. You become effective witnesses to Christ. Okay, you become effective witnesses to Christ, meaning you are obedient, you listen to the Holy Spirit, and then you become to, you you start partnering with the Holy Spirit to share the gospel to others, and that's our core value. We're mission focused, diba? And the second one is this: we we you see that the gift of the Holy Spirit, we we, we you would see it in our lives. So I put it there so you can take a picture. Sorry, N. Take a picture. But these are the different gifts that you can have. Gifts, okay? You don't earn it. You don't work hard for it. You receive it by God's grace. And it's in 1 Corinthians and Isaiah. So you can read through it if you want textual context. But there's the gift of wisdom. And the gift of knowledge. The gift of faith. The gift of healing. Miracles. Prophecy. Discerning spirit. Tongues, which is a big, big one. Um, interpreting tongues, gifts of administration, the gifts of help. All of these things God willingly gives to those who desire. Why? So that we can be a witness to people. Amen? Amen. And you see, we, more than the gifts, the gifts are great. We need the gifts. Personally, I'm praying for specific ones. Pa. But these gifts are great. But you know what's even a better indicator that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us? It's the evident fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen? It's, that's the best and clearest indicator that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you and you have a relationship with Jesus and that you honor God with your life. You have the fruit of the Spirit and the fruit naturally comes out when we choose to obey. Amen? And what is this fruit of the Holy Spirit? This, the fruit of the Spirit is there's love, there's joy, my peace, my patience, which is forbearance, my kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And let me tell you, you will be challenged with all of these things. And when you get through that challenge, fruit, there you will bear fruit in your life. Amen? Amen. So love, challenge niyan mag-forgive. Challenge nyan to die to yourself so you can love people better. Joy. When you're feeling anxious, the enemy will tempt you to worry. But then when you surrender that to God and you still choose to praise Him despite what you're going through, what do you get? Joy. Peace and anxiety. Patience. When you are losing in the patience, lahat ng parents say amen. Diba? Kindness sa mga asawa. Hmm. Goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, self-control, all of these, when we obey, <laughs> all these fruits would come up. Amen? Kaya, alam nyo ba, narinig ko to lagi, and I've said it myself, gusto ko magbago, pero di ko magawa. Parang rap yan, di ba? Gusto ko magbago. Gusto ko magbago, Lord. I try. Gusto ko talaga, Lord, pero di ko talaga magawa eh. 
But when you surrender to God and the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, that's a lie. You can actually get through those things. That's a lie. And so we now get to live like Jesus through the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Gising pa balahat? Amen. Amen. So, you know what? We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to be good parents, to be good husbands and wives, to be good children to our parents, to be good students, to be good employees, to have a spirit of excellence in us. We need God in our lives. We need help. Tama ba? Who here needs help? Again, who here needs help? Ayan. Bute, we're in a humble church. Walang pride. And we need it because we get fearful, we get anxious, we get shy. The enemy will try to steal, kill, and destroy. But you can do it. Amen? So, the indwelling. When the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, this is God taking up permanent residence in us. Sa loob natin so that we can become more like Jesus and be a witness to Jesus. So we don't take this lightly. We don't take this gift for granted. Why? Because the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit starts to live inside of you, our bodies are not ours anymore. Amen? And we're going to go through this a bit more here. So, next question is, how do we get filled with the Holy Spirit? Paano? Okay, that sounds great. But how do we get filled by the Holy Spirit? Simple. The way to get filled with the Holy Spirit is the first one, if you haven't yet. It's through accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And when you accept Jesus and your Lord and Savior, you're basically saying, God, ayoko na. I give you full reign over my life. I give you full control. I need you as my Savior. And so when you believe in your heart that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. So when you do that, immediately the Holy Spirit actually starts to dwell in you. But the second one is this. There's this thing called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is where when you get baptized by the Holy Spirit, which is a second experience upon salvation, this is where speaking in tongues might happen. I say might because not everyone has it automatically, kaagad-agad. Uh, there are famous people, names that you know, maybe John Piper, uh, Max Lucado, where they only, they desire to have speaking in tongues, but they got it much, much later on. And so, how do we get Holy Spirit? It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And church, we're gonna do that today. We're gonna do, go, we're gonna do these, these two things today. And you know, there's a third one, which is the baptism of fire. Sabi niya, fire. And fire is the purification when the fire, when you get baptized with the fire, my goodness, lahat ng mga, woo, na mga parang mga spirits, generational stuff, masusunog. Mawawala. That's the baptism of fire. And a little scary, I'm like, if you're a first time and you don't know this, it's like, what? But guess what? It's been in the Bible all this time. So, that's how we get to experience the Holy Spirit. And let me just dive into just a little bit the spirit the speaking in tongues. And the speaking in tongues, it's not a learned language. You don't learn it. You don't copy it from someone. But when the Holy Spirit comes on you, like Acts 2, what happened with the disciples, you start speaking this tongue and it's a heavenly language. And the cool thing about this is you have no idea what it is. You may get the gift of interpretation, but what happens is when you speak in tongues, you don't know what it is, but by faith, you are being edified. You're quickly connected to God. When I'm speaking in tongues while I'm driving, even here, when I'm speaking in tongues, while I'm speaking in tongues, it's like my spirit is connected and suddenly I can discern what's happening in the room. It's, and it's not credit to anyone. It's really the Holy Spirit giving, helping and guiding. So that, that is, that's why we all should desire speaking in tongues. Amen? But we should desire gifts even more. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. And so... Once the Holy Spirit dwells in you, the next question is, how do we make sure that the Holy Spirit stays in us? Kasi kailangan natin ng tulong eh. But how do we make sure the Holy Spirit stays in us as Christians, as people who have a relationship with Jesus, as those adopted by God as His children? How? 
This is a very important verse. Well, text. Sabi dito, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. You want the Holy Spirit to stay in us? In you? Honor God with your bodies. When the Holy Spirit starts to convict you of things, obey. Amen? Amen? The Holy Spirit starts to convict you. Don't watch that thing in the evening. Tama na. No, that's not good for you, anak. Stop it. The Holy Spirit starts convicting you. Don't talk to that girl. You have may asawa ka. Wag mong kausapin yan. That's dangerous for you. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit starts convicting you of things. Hey, anak, yung mind mo, anxious na naman. Ito ang isipin mo instead. That's the Holy Spirit. But the thing is, when the Holy Spirit starts to speak to us and we choose not to listen, that's when we grieve the Holy Spirit. Kaya si sabi mo, bakit di ko marinig si Lord? Actually, di mo marinig si Holy Spirit. Kasi may mga bagay na sinasabi siya na hindi natin sinusunod. And that is automatically, nagtatanang, it really stops us eh from, from being connected to God. So how do we make sure first is you gotta give Jesus the full reign, lordship of our lives. Every part of your life, finances, relationships, give it to God. The things that you are holding on to that's not pleasing to God, give it to God. If you only have one thing to take when you go home today, it's give Jesus the full lordship of your life. Give him your all. The next is walk in purity. It's a big one. We can't just come to church and sing songs and worship Him and do something else when we leave. I get it. It's hard. Tama? But we're being called to walk in purity. And the third one is this. We gotta yield Meaning, ibigay nat, parang to surrender, to submit to God's will every single day. In other words, when He speaks, obey. Listen and obey. Amen? You know, Romans 8 verse 5 to 6 says, Those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. But those living in the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. When you follow your flesh and your personal wants, it brings death. When you follow what the Spirit desires for you, it brings life. That's why you get to have an abundant life. Christian faith is not complicated, to be honest. We have everything we need. We have a God who provides. We have a Father who loves us and proven His love by sending Jesus to us, our Savior. We have a Savior. And not just that, we have Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus time and time again affirmed the disciples, hey, don't be sad when I go up to heaven because you're going to have a helper. Meaning, you can reach the ends of the earth and I will be with you. Wow. You're never alone. And so, our verse today is this. And we're going to do something different. We're going to ask everyone to stand up. But our verse today is, Where the Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. And mga kapatid, there's freedom for you. Not just for this morning, but for a lifetime. Can I ask everyone to stand up today? Amen. Spirit of the living God is here. He's here. And God is so faithful. He's so loving and so kind. Now, we don't deserve any of His goodness, and yet He still provides. Tama? He still gave us the Holy Spirit. And today, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to give everyone an opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus yet, if this is the beginning of a life of freedom. It's having a relationship with Jesus. 
So can I ask everyone to close your eyes and bow down their heads and if we can turn off the lights at the back. This is going to be a moment between you and God. If you have never had a relationship with Jesus, you never actually give God, gave God the reins, gave Jesus the reins of your heart and your life. Maybe you did before, but life happened. You walked out on Him. Things happened. This is your moment to say yes to Him. The Bible is very clear in Romans 12 that if you receive and believe in your heart that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. Salvation is at hand. Amen. So, kung gusto mong i-accept si Jesus sa buhay mo, hindi to pang iba ng religion. It's really starting a relationship with Him. That's you. Can I ask you to just close your eyes, everyone? That's you. Can I just ask you to put your hand up? That's you there. I see your hand. I see your hand at the back. I see hands at the back. Amen. Amen. I see you. Wow. See you there on the right side towards the end. Okay, so we're going to pray a prayer and I want you to pray this with me and the whole church will pray together with you. But this is a personal prayer between you and God, okay? Say this with me. Dear Lord God, thank you so much for loving me before I even knew you. Thank you for giving me a Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for taking up my sins and putting it on the cross just in case I say yes to you. Jesus, I'm sorry for all the things I've done. Would you forgive me? Would you come into my life? Would you be my Lord? Would you be my, my Savior? Have your way in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Everyone say, Amen, 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 Amen. Now, the prayer you just prayed is the start. And when you actually truly said yes to Jesus and received Him, the Holy Spirit starts to dwell in you now. And so you can go forth and start that relationship with Him. Amen.